Okay. I'm not expecting a whole lot, but maybe just a, a private little club in the chat wall and just a, a fun little chat to go and uh, have a little discussion with the Oscars. So hopefully it will be fun, it will be pleasant, and uh, we will have people come in and uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll do the best we can. But anyways, I think we're all set up and ready, so let's go ahead and get this one started. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a very special episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. And this one is going to be a little special and also a little quick, because I'm going to be very honest, we're only going to be talking about one story in particular, and I'm not expecting this to go over an hour, maybe 30 minutes, maybe 45, uh, but I'm honestly quite surprised that we do have some people in the chat while I wasn't expecting much of an audience, or at the very least, maybe not the same amount of audience that I would get usually on Saturdays, but uh, we all know why we are here, and of course, this episode will be entirely dedicated to the 91st annual Academy Awards. Yes, last night, or at the very least, uh, the night before I am recording this right now, it was indeed the Oscars, and I did actually spend the time to actually watch the entire show, and even live tweeted during the events and all that kind of stuff, so it was fun interacting with the people on Twitter, and uh, just uh, really pleasant to just see what was going on at the Oscars and see who won and uh, all that kind of stuff. So it definitely was fascinating. And I think this really is an Oscars really worth talking about. So for the people who are in the chat wall right now, or at least for the uh, few people that are on, I don't have any stats on like how many people are live right now. But uh, anyways, guys, are you all ready to talk about this year's Oscars. Are you all ready? All right, let's see. Do we have a few yeses? I can even accept just one yes that they're ready, so we can go ahead and begin. Oh, perfect. Good, 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 good. We do have people that are prepared. We do have people that are ready. So let's go ahead and get things started. Let us talk about the Oscars. Now, before I go ahead and uh, go dive right into it, I will be separating it into three different parts for this episode. I'm going to start things off by talking about the animation categories, uh, which includes Best Animated Feature and also Best Animated Short, considering that it is Animat's crazy cartoon cast. So, of course, we do have to highlight the animation bits. Uh, but also, after that, we're going to go and discuss about all the other winners, who won, who got snubbed, and all that kind of stuff. We could just share our thoughts on that. And then finally, we will go and talk about the show itself. How did the Oscars show go this year? Because this is very uh, unique and uh, like one to really keep an eye on, considering that for the first time in 30 years, the Oscars did not have a host. So how did things go without a host for them? Well, uh, we'll have to wait and uh, we'll talk about that a little later. But... With all that said, of course, for Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast, since we are all animation fans, I think the first thing that we do have to talk about, of course, is the winner of Best Animated Feature is, without a doubt, of course, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the latest animated feature brought to us by Sony Pictures Animation. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse managed to win the Oscar over plenty of other well-crafted animated features as well, uh, with the other nominations including uh, Incredibles 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Mirai, and also, what was the other one? Oh, right, Isle of Dogs. <laughs> How the fridge can I forget that one? And uh, honestly, it is quite fascinating to see Spider-Man winning this one. Uh, but I, I will start things off by saying that I'm not going to lie in that there is a little bit of a part of me that did feel a little bit disappointed that Spider-Man didn't win. Not necessarily because I was against this movie. I do find it to be really good, and um, I will explain later that I definitely do see why it did win. But it was mostly because I wanted to see how the fans would react. Because I'm not gonna lie, I did start to take notice online that I was starting to see more and more that the fans of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse we're starting to take some very creepy steps where it almost feels like 
they were starting to enter into the zone of being a toxic fan base. And the reason why I do say that, and probably the biggest instance that I did notice it, I remember it was, ironically enough, on Twitter, where there was this um, whole trend going on that I did feel like it was going a little bit too far, where uh, Pixar, on their Twitter, they were just advertising Incredibles 2 uh, for it, so that voters can go and vote for that one for Best Animated Feature. But somehow... I don't know how it all began. I don't know how it became like a, a meme or something like that. But basically a whole bunch of people on Twitter, more than like a thousand or even two thousand, they would immediately jump on that tweet and they would reply with the exact same gif of uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse where we saw Spider-Man, uh, like the original Peter Parker, where we first see him and immediately getting his spider senses. Like people kept going at it one by one and it started to pile up. And I do get the joke and I, I do see why it could be funny how we see like the same gift being presented over and over again. But then I started to see where it became a little bit dangerous. That's where I saw where there is a bit of a fine line uh, between taking a joke and then suddenly just going into a level where it is mean-spirited. Even down to the point where people would comment on it, it started to go into that territory where it would go and uh, bring up some flame wars. Now, I I'm not saying that there were some legit fights that were going on, but it was about to. I did start to notice that... Now this little trend that happened there was starting to feel like a little bit of bullying and really undermining the efforts of Incredibles 2. I don't care what people say on, uh, about Incredibles 2, like, even though, yeah, there are probably better movies out there, but Incredibles 2, it's still a good movie on its own, and the animators who have worked on that and Brad Bird and the team at Pixar, they still did a great job uh, on that movie, regardless of how the other movies did. So honestly, I do feel like this is, it's like less support of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and more bullying other movies like Incredibles 2 and bullying other animators who worked on Incredibles 2 in the name of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, where it, it, it's like, it, they, they, they were just taking a joke and just taking it a little bit too far. So going back into the Oscars right over here, it did make me wonder what would happen if Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse did not win. Where I did think, how would the fans react if it was given to something else? Like, if it was given to Incredibles 2, or Ralph Breaks the Internet, or even, like, some of the other movies, like Isle of Dogs, or even Mirai. Which does beg the question, is there anybody out there who was rooting for Mirai to win Best Animated Feature, like, even more than Spider-Verse or Incredibles 2 or whatever? I don't know, I feel like there there must be at least that one person who was like a full-on Mirai fan and really wanted that to win. Maybe it's just me, I, I don't know. Well, not me, because uh, I was rooting for Isle of Dogs. <laughs> no, but my point is, is that um, I looked at it and it did make me feel a little bit curious about what would happen because that would be a real true test to see if the fans of Spider-Verse would be well-behaved or if they would just be completely going, like, insane and just be completely outraged and making rants on uh, social media and stuff like that. Like, it would have been a true test to see um, if there is any form of toxicity in uh, fans of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. But, I will say though, uh, since that did not happen, I will say um, I am happy to see that it is not the case. Uh, so far, it doesn't look like there will be any form of toxicity related to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And um, actually, on a side note, there is another reason why I do feel like there is a bit of that concern because I will admit there has been some of that toxicity that got towards me regarding uh, the elements of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Because you guys might remember, um, probably I think a couple of months ago, I think I could say that right now, yes, a, a couple of months ago, that I released the top five best and worst animated films of 2018. And of course, I did put Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse among the best lists, but I only put it at number three behind Incredibles 2 and Isle of Dogs. And you guys have no idea how many people 
got so offended, got so pissed off. People bombarding me with dislikes and angry comments that they were not satisfied because they didn't hear what they want to hear. That they just want to hear people say that Spider-Man is better than any other animated film of 2018, but because they didn't get that satisfaction, that I kind of got attacked hard on that. So... That, that's why I do feel, so probably part of that is a bit of a personal reason where I did get those attacks for not saying that Spider-Man is objectively better than any other animated films of 2018. So there is probably that side of me because I would have those concerns because of those pointless attacks over an animated movie and just like innocently expressing my opinion, of course. Uh, but overall, like, I would gladly say that I think we are at the point that now, uh, considering that award season is over, I think it, it is safe to say that with Spider-Man fan, with Spider-Verse fans, like they 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 have so far avoided that form of toxicity. Like now we can actually go and move on and appreciate the next big animated thing that would be out in theaters or stuff like that. Well, uh, considering that recently we got How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, maybe that could be the new thing that we can focus and celebrate on. So uh, there is that. But yes, anyways, even though, um, yes, yeah, Spider-Verse is the winner, but uh, still maybe there is a part of me that would say like, I want Ralph Breaks the Internet to win because Anarchy! Anarchy! Bring madness onto social media! <laughs> no, but anyways, even regardless of all that, I do completely understand why Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse won Best Animated Feature. And yes, it definitely is a movie that does deserve to, re to actually receive Best Animated Feature because the stuff that they have done there, it really is unlike any other animated feature has done so far. And it really is... A fascinating film to watch and on top of that it is a very well crafted movie on its own like even without the animation the story the writing that went into it is absolutely phenomenal probably some of the best that even phil lord has done so far even though he didn't do it with chris miller he did it with uh, rodney rothman um they you know it's still some of the like some of the best writing that I have seen from a Phil Lord and Chris Miller production. So, from there, I, I can see how, like, it is a solid movie on its own, but with the animation, it really brought it to a whole new level. So, I can see how something like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, it delivered something that no one has ever seen before. With Incredibles 2 and Ralph Breaks the Internet... Those are sequels, so yeah, we have seen that before. And even with Isle of Dogs, which that one was my number one choice, like I would, I would be like really, ha I would have been like really happy if Isle of Dogs was the winner for best animated feature. For me, I feel like that was the best animated film of 2018. But um, like even with Isle of Dogs, I do understand that it is a movie that people kind of have seen before because it is a very similar style to what Wes Anderson has already done with Fantastic Mr. Fox. But with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, there's no other animated film to compare to. There was nothing like it. So, of course, it did get that Oscar to not only do something unique and something different, but to really pull, like, to really pull it off so well. And, um, honestly, from there... Uh, I would like to add as well that honestly, the more I think about it, the more that there, the, the more that I feel like there is one reason that I feel like there is one amazing thing, one great thing that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse actually did win Best Animated Picture over stuff like Incredibles 2 and Ralph Breaks the Internet, and the reason why I'm really happy about it is actually because, oh my God, okay, good. A non-Disney animated feature actually won. Could those crazy conspiracy theorists please shut up now? Because honestly, that's one thing during award season that I am sick and tired of hearing about. People always antagonizing and demonizing Disney and spreading fake conspiracy theories about the award shows. Because yes, technically it is true that Disney is the one that has been getting the most Oscars. Rather it be through Disney animation or with Pixar, they have gathered 
a whole like they've been collecting the most when it comes to the category of best animated feature but many people forget that disney only won most of them they didn't win every single one of them because of course the people who would be doing that they completely forgot about all the other animated features that actually did win be uh, the uh, yeah all the other animated features that did win in this category they forgot about shrek they forgot about Spirited Away. With, uh, by the way, with Shrek on the side, I would like to mention that Shrek is actually the first one ever at the Oscars to actually get that win for Best Animated Feature. So yeah, there was Shrek, there's Spirited Away, there's Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were-Rabbit, there's Happy Feet, and there's Rango. And now we also got Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So hopefully it can shut off those weird and wacky conspiracy theories regarding, oh, Disney would rig all the awards so that they would collect the most for best animated picture, which none of it is freaking true, by the way. The, like, honestly, like, whenever I would hear people say that, it's like I, I immediately shut off and just walk away from whatever th other crazy thing that that person would go and say because that that's honestly going into the levels of um like you're you, like if you're gonna go and spread those rumors going around then you're pretty much going into infowars mode and spreading what what's basically flat out lies with nothing to prove that any of that would be true other than the fact that you're just so butthurt about it and, and, and honestly, it, it like, and, and I did express that on social media, and there are some people that actually did tell me that, yeah, you know what, um, you know, that's a nice thought, but I don't think it's gonna stop them, which is probably true, and I wouldn't be surprised if in the next year or in the following years when Disney does go back and win, uh, Best Animated Feature, people are gonna resume to do that, and they'll completely forget about all those other movies, including Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, so, the, the, like, they just wanna try to justify their butthurtness. I don't know if butthurtness is a word, but um, maybe that could be a way of describing it. So, honestly, it's just I want that to go and shut those people up to prove that, no, the uh, you know, they don't always go to Disney. There's no conspiracy theory that Disney would rig all that stuff. So, um, at least there is a bit of that reassurance right over there. Until maybe next year when either Toy Story 4 or Frozen 2 could win and then like that suddenly is gonna go uh, like resume all over again and like we're gonna get the headaches from that. And especially um, like probably the leader of this whole thing, like one person who is highly responsible for spreading those lies and fake conspiracy theories. Like honestly, I would pin, uh, like I would blame a lot of that towards a mid a midi of Cartoon Brew because that guy is a major advocate of always antagonizing Disney just for that, just for winning all these awards. And on a side note that I would like to add regarding that element is the fact that there are two things that I know can prove that it's not necessarily the case. And number one, it's more the factor that it's not really Disney rigging anything in the Oscars, it's just that the Oscars and the Academy doesn't necessarily care about animation. Like, you notice recently, um, like, as the years would go by, animated features would get less and less nominations outside of Best Animated Feature, which is why it is a very surprising sight to see that with this year, we saw that Isle of Dogs not only got a nomination for Best Animated Feature, but also for Best Original Score. So that's why people in the animation circles, they would make a big deal of the fact that an animated feature can get more than one nomination other than its template category with best animated feature. So it's not really them. It's mostly the Academy. And even at that, they don't really watch all of them. I highly doubt that the grand majority of people who did watch um, like, the, the grand majority of people who would go and vote on Best Animated Feature, they haven't seen all of them. Like, I highly doubt the grand majority have even seen Mirai. I'm just saying. And honestly, number two, the reason why, why this is not the case is mainly because, well, it's Disney. Disney is so far making the Best Animated Features in recent years. 
it's like you're, you're at a point where you're like, well, who else would you go and give it to? Because you look into the categories, like you look at, you look back in um, the 20, like you look back when Frozen won the Oscar, who else would you go and give it? Or like when you see last year with Coco, who the fridge else would you go and give it? Because you know the Academy isn't really going to go for the independent ones. So really among like the mainstream ones, of course they're going to go with the one that is not only more popular, but the one that is the most acclaimed. So of course they're going to go and pick Disney, it's not necessarily Disney's fault that they keep on winning these awards. It's just that the other ones, they need to go and pick up their game. They need to go and actually put a lot more effort into their work. So really, don't antagonize Disney for being too good. Like, tell the others, tell DreamWorks, tell Sony, tell Warner Brothers, tell Illumination, tell them to really step up their game to make animated features that would actually go and compete with Disney in the award season. And that's exactly what Sony did this year with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. They didn't go and try to create more of their like cheap, objectively terrible cartoony schlock like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs or Emoji Movie. Like they decided to step up their game, be serious and actually make an animated feature for once with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And they got rewarded greatly for that. That's why they ended up winning the grand majority of best animated feature categories. That's how they really did step up their game. So it's not Disney's fault that they keep on winning the awards. It's just that other studios need to try to go and step up their game. Just like what Sony did with Spider-Man. That's what they got to do. And that is why all the freaking whining and complaining is just freaking garbage. It is annoying. That, 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 that's all it is. It's just whining and complaining and pointless antagonizing towards Disney just because they're doing a better job than most other companies in terms of making animated films. They're, they're just doing their jobs. That's, that's freaking it. You know, you, there's no point in making them look like the bad guy just because they make better animated films than others. I, I'm just laying it out there. But also, uh, going back into uh, Spider-Verse, uh, the one thing, th th it was actually someone who actually did point out uh, something that is actually kind of interesting regarding Into the Spider-Verse where we do, actually bit, uh, we do actually see some Oscar history and that is actually with the fact that when it comes to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, one of the directors, Peter Ramsey, is now going to be in the history books as the first ever African American to actually win an Oscar for best animated feature. Like you look back, it's mostly just a whole bunch of white dudes. So honestly, with Peter Ramsey getting that award, I think like this, like honestly, it, it's starting to become to a point where we need to keep an eye on Peter Ramsey because he's becoming more and more of an icon in animation and especially um, a strong representative of African Americans in the field of animation, almost like uh, a modern day Floyd Norman in a sense. So uh, uh, so this is just to say that, yeah, Peter Ramsey is, is definitely making a big name for himself and you definitely have to go and keep an eye out for him. So uh, honestly, I think that it is my, that, that, that should be my whole take on Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse getting that big win. I know it is a whole lot to say, but uh, uh, honestly, I think to conclude that little part, I would like to say um, congratulations to all the directors, congratulations to Bob Persetti, to Peter Ramsey, to Ronnie Rothman, and to the whole team at Sony for doing an incredible job with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and uh, I could definitely see how uh, the way that you push animation to the next level, you definitely deserve it. Uh, to win like all these awards including the Oscars so great job on you guys but with that said though I would like to add that uh, even though Incredibles 2 did not actually get the win though even though Incredibles 2 like they just ended up getting a nomination and that's it that doesn't necessarily mean Pixar did not walk away with an Oscar win because let us go into best animated short. Uh, where is it? Yes, best animated short. The winner is actually 
Bao. And you guys, if you are listening or watching this, then there's a very good chance that you have actually seen Bao, considering that it is the animated short that appeared before Incredibles 2. And I would say, I'll just get it out there, uh, first of all, to say that technically Bao is not necessarily my first choice for the winner for Best Animated Short. For me, I've stated before in this podcast that, uh, honestly, One Small Step is actually my favorite of the whole bunch. And I was really rooting for that one to go and win for Best a Animated Short. It was such a moving picture it was just very well crafted i really wanted that one to win all the way but that's not to say that i am a bit disappointed that bow ended up being the winner instead because with bow that one was honestly my second pick like if it wasn't one small step then i would have gone with bow instead and that does seem to be the case so honestly i'm not that mad i'm not that disappointed about that um, but also, honestly, the more that I do think about it, the more that I actually do feel like when it comes to Bao, I think it really is a great thing that it actually did win the Oscar for Best Animated Short. Because here's the thing, though. Uh, with Bao winning an Oscar, that doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, this is just another win for Pixar. But this is more a win for women in animation. Now, uh, I wish I could have done more research on it, but I do believe that Bao, like you can, um, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I do believe Bao is actually the first ever Pixar project that was actually directed by a woman, which is uh, Domi Shi. Uh, am I right on that? Am I wrong? Has there been one before at Pixar? Like, rather it be just an animated short? Like, yeah, the Brandon Chapman scenario with Brave, that doesn't necessarily count. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, with Bao, with the whole thing with, uh, with Bao, yeah, it, it, it is the fact that, um, we got a woman who actually did win for Best Animated Short at a highly prominent studio at Pixar. So, honestly uh yeah uh let's see now yeah there was yeah someone mentioned there was brave but brenda chapman uh had to fight for her credit yeah like that that, that that's the thing i mean more like a woman was in charge and in charge of the whole thing without getting kicked out and stuff like that or replaced by a man or anything like that like this is a project made by a woman and it was finished by a woman so honestly, with the factor that Bao actually did win at a highly prominent studio at Pixar, I feel like this is a very encouraging thing for women in animation and probably something to encourage uh, mainstream studios like Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, Warner Brothers, or whatever to go and bring on board more women to be in charge of their animated projects, not just for more animated shorts, but also for animated features. So in a way, that's how I view the win of Bao is that it, it is more for those women that if they can, you know, if they can make their voice more prominent to go and create their own projects, uh, they can be greatly rewarded and they can benefit well to the company. So hopefully Pixar will take note about this bow win and, and especially like now it is under new management, under Pete Doctor instead of uh, John Lasseter. Hopefully that will encor it, it will encourage more women uh, to be more to be in more prominent roles. Uh, and, and I don't mean just uh, to be like head animators. I don't mean just writers or producers, but to be like full on directors. So if that can result into that and like spread across different animation studios, then honestly, that would be fantastic. That would be something really worth getting excited over. So honestly, that one is uh, actually great. And uh, oh, uh, it looks like, yeah, it, it looks like I was correct. Yeah, it was the first Pixar project directed by a woman. So um, it, it's definitely, so yeah, from there, I, I do see this as a highly, pro, pro, uh, a highly positive thing 
uh, for women in animation. So from there, uh, like with Spider-Man, I, I need to give out my congratulations. So yeah, major congrats to uh, Domi Shi and the team at Pixar for their Oscar win for Bao. It is well deserved and hopefully this will send out a highly positive message and something that could be highly encouraging for all the women working in the animation industry. Okay, so I think with that said, we are pretty much all good with, um, with all the animation categories. We have spoken enough about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. We have spoken enough about Bao. I think now it is time that we can go and talk about the rest. Because, oh boy, we really do have a wide variety of... When it comes to all these different awards, in fact, um, there is very there are very few movies out there that actually did get multiple wins. Uh, I do have like I actually did get my list here of uh, all the different like this is actually my sheet that I use for all the predictions like who would who I think would win and who actually won. So uh, I'm also using this as reference on top of uh, the list that I have here, which is coming from the New York Times. And uh, from here, what, what's very interesting to note is that there are only four Oscar, uh, four movies that actually did get multiple wins. And those actually include uh, Bohemian Rhapsody actually winning a total of four of them. Uh, that one actually walked away with the most Oscars, which it won for uh, Best Sound Mixing, Best Sound Editing, uh, Best Film Editing, and also Best Actor in a Re Best Actor in a Leading Role with Rami Malek as Freddie Mercury. And I will say this, um, I have expressed my thoughts uh, so a few times before on social media regarding the film Bohemian Rhapsody, but when it comes to Rami, Malek, uh, Rami Malek's performance, I do feel like he did a fantastic job. He really did uh, do the most when it comes to the materials that he has uh, given to him, and he did pull off a great and convincing performance as Freddie Mercury. I know a lot of people would joke around regarding uh, the false teeth and it looks like it's trying to escape his mouth or uh, the way that his teeth makes uh, Rami Malek look more like Nigel Chan... Uh, well, is it Nigel? No, not... No, not Nigel Channing, but uh, Nigel from the uh, not Nigel Thornberry. He looks more, yeah, he looks like Nigel from the Wild Thornberries more so than he does Freddie Mercury. But honestly, the performance that he did deliver is just absolutely fantastic. Um, he really did do the best he can with that performance in a way that really does feel convincing, and it really it, it's less acting and more bringing such a prominent and legendary figure like Freddie Mercury. And bringing him to life. So for me, that is actually... So honestly, for me, I do feel like, yeah, as it is predictable that Rami Malek would won. But there honestly is a good reason why Rami Malek won for that. So uh, great job on him for actually getting it. And I will say, though, that uh, when it comes to the other wins that uh, Bohemian Rhapsody got, I think it honestly is very predictable with the fact that, yes, Bohemian Rhapsody is the winner of sound mixing and sound editing, especially with the fact that we are talking about a music, a, a movie that is all about music. So it does pay careful attention to the sound of it. So, of course, it would go and end up winning the uh, best sound editing and best sound mixing category. So it's like a, two, a package like that's like two in one in a way. So that is not surprising whatsoever. I wouldn't be surprised if some people would think that maybe A Star Is Born would get sound mixing because that is another movie that is about music as well. But yeah, honestly, if Bohemian Rhapsody is actually prominent in both uh, sound editing and sound mixing, then that's the one that's most likely the winner. Yes, I know, like, uh, you got Roma, Black Panther, and First Man that were also nominated in both of them, but Bohemian Rhapsody, it's all about the sound, so they gotta give it to them, so that that's kind of obvious. But then at the same time, we also got uh, other winners as well, including Roma, and what's very interesting to note about Roma is that even though Roma got three Oscar wins... They all go to the same guy. Uh, just looking into my list, uh, it looks like Roma actually won for uh, Best Cinematography. It won for... Uh, what's the other one? Fudge, nebbit. Um, 
Hold on, best no, not you, not you. I'm trying to figure out where. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. Why? Why did I forget that? So it won for best cinematography. It won for best foreign language film. Which this, like, this is probably the first time in a long time where it's not best animated feature. That's the most obvious in terms of who would be the winner. Because of course. Be because, of course, Roma is the winner of Best Foreign Language Film, considering that it got 10 nominations, it's, like, highly prominent at the Oscars. Guess who's going to win Best Foreign Language Film? Uh, is it going to be, like, Cold War, uh, Shoplifters, or the one that's got, like, 10 freaking nominations? Let's be real, guys. And also, uh, it the biggest one that it won, of course, is Best Directing for Alfonso Cuarón. And on that one, every single one of them is from Alfonso Cuaron. He's the one who would get Best Foreign Language Film because it is his movie. Best Directing because he was the director. And also Best Cinematography because he was the cinematographer. And, um, you know, no did not, you know, and uh, I I'm not saying that as a bad thing. It, it, you know, it is uh, more of a coincidence than anything because, of course, Alfonso Cuaron is uh, a legendary director who has done a lot of amazing work. But it is kind of funny the way that, like, with all the different wins that it got, it has to be from uh, one guy who did all, who did the work on that. <laughs> Okay, anyways, uh, let's go and move on to our next one. I, I might as well talk about this right now. Let's go ahead and discuss about Green Book. And the funny thing with Green Book is that um, Green Book is actually the big winner of everything. Uh, it actually won, like, even though it only got three Oscars, it got uh, Best Original Screenplay, it got best uh, best supporting actor for Mahershala Ali, which, by the way, is actually his second Oscar for winning best actor in a supporting role. Because I do believe he actually did get one for Moonlight, and um, that's one thing that I find funny is that um, like that that would be the one real like honestly I felt like the worst case scenario this would be the reassurance for Spider Verse fans that in case if it ever happens that with Spider Man into the Spider Verse like if it ended up not winning an Oscar for Best Animated Feature at the very least Uncle Aaron did actually get an Oscar. Uh, for a different movie at least miles would have been happy for that so at least you did get that little reassurance but also the biggest one is the fact that it won for best picture yes green book is the biggest winner of them all uh beating out all the other categories including black panther black klansman uh, for Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Roma, A Star is Born, and Vice. And this is probably the most controversial element from this year's Oscar is actually the factor that Green Book is the winner. In fact, I even see right now in the uh, chat wall that there are some people that are very upset of the fact that Green Book actually did win. Because uh, honestly, I'm not that, for me... I'm not necessarily that surprised at all of the fact that, yes, Green Book was the big winner. Mainly because with Green Book, it really did seem like the kind of film that the Oscars would lean to in terms of like, oh, which one would we give it to? Because I know that there are a lot of them that uh, are quite appealing for the Oscars. The ones that they would usually give it to like you got your period pieces like with the favorite and then like you got the like you kind of got like your star studded mainstream uh grabber that everybody adored like uh, a star is born and then like you got a few fan favorites of course that have to be there in order to get engagement from audiences like uh black panther or bohemian rhapsody oh and also black Klansman, i would also put it in the same category as a Star is Born as one of those more mainstream movies that got a lot of attention and got a, got a lot of uh, love from audiences. But with Green Book, the reason why I feel like it is pretty obvious as to why is it that one would be the winner, it's mainly because uh, it is the kind of film that... It is trying to fight against bigotry. It's trying to say how racism is bad. And it's trying to so it, it's pretty much trying to show that see white and black people can live together in harmony. We can fight against bigotry because bigotry is the bad guys. <laughs> now I'm I'm not I, you know I'm not making fun 
fun of, of like the Oscars for thinking that way because it is definitely true that uh, bigotry is terrible and that we do it is something to fight against and to eradicate. But you could tell how is it that with um, you, you know with Green Book it is something that they they would lean more towards that it is more a uh, like it, it is the kind of movie that would bring out uh, a, a a more positive vibe. And if you can excuse me, I just need to fix up something real quick. Okay, so sorry about that, folks. Uh, <laughs> oh, hopefully you got your little break. Uh, we could consider that as the uh, intermission. So, uh, yeah, and, and I mean, yeah, and, and I know that some people could say that technically with uh, Black Klansman, it did bring out the same kind of message as uh, Green Book, but Green Book was a movie that's a little bit more positive. So I can see how the Oscars, for them, they would lean more towards that movie to give it best picture so um for so yeah like you like i know that there are going to be a lot of people that they could argue if they either agree or disagree with that choice but i'm for me i'm not that surprised that the oscars would lean towards that one in particular but then finally there is one more movie that did get multiple wins and that one is probably the most notable of them all and that would have to be the one and only Black Panther. Yes, for the first time in movie history, a Marvel movie finally got an Oscar. And not just one Oscar, it actually won three Oscars. Uh, just looking into my list, and honestly, these ones were... Um, were actually quite surprising. Uh, Black Panther actually won for Best Costume Design, it won for Best Original Score, and it also won for Best Production Design. And considering how Black Panther was so prominent throughout the Oscars, um, honestly for me, I did feel like there was a possibility that Black Panther wouldn't really win much of it, considering that it was a movie that, like, it had to be nominated in there because it was a very, like, it was one of the most popular movies of 2018, debatably. Or I could even say it was the most popular movie of 2018, more so than Avengers Infinity War, the one that really got people talking. So, like, I felt like it is possible that when it came to the Oscars, they just wanted to do it to engage audiences to come on board and watch the Oscars and stuff like that. More so, more for rating purposes than for legitimate purposes because they did that great of a job. But, um, like, that was my feeling. But I guess I could be wrong on that. Because, uh, yeah, the Oscars were actually kind of serious when it comes to the stuff that Black Panther delivered and even gave them the awards for those things. Like, I, I was expecting a whole bunch of other stuff, like... For those categories, like, I was expecting maybe they would lean more towards the favorite for stuff like costume design and production design because it is a period piece and the Oscars love their period pieces. And I'm not gonna lie, for Best Original Score, I was rooting for either uh, Isle of Dogs or Mary Poppins Returns, but uh, with the fact that Black Panther actually did make it, uh, again, I would say that... Uh, that is actually something that I wasn't expecting, but I can see, like, as uh, similar to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, I can see why they went and picked those ones, th they would pick that as their big winner, because Black Panther is a very well-crafted movie, uh, not just a great superhero movie, not just a great Marvel movie, and not another great, not, not just another great piece of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but even as a feature on its own, it is very well crafted. It looks amazing. Uh, the the visuals are absolutely stunning. It is a, a colorful feature. It is an action-packed feature with a lot of very fascinating commentary. So I do understand how it would win those elements. And, and it is true that, yes. Like, I mean, with the costume designs, like, you could say a big part of the movie is related to the costume, so that would make sense. Uh, production design, I mean, bringing Wakanda to life, 
it really is fascinating. So I guess even the Oscars are going Wakanda forever because Wakanda is getting an Oscar for that production design. And with the original score, yeah, like it, re it really does help to be highly engaging. It was a lot of fun. So overall, it was very surprising. But now we can finally have that moment where Marvel can be capable of actually getting a bet you know to actually go and get the oscar it's no long like we no longer have to use those jokes of the academy award winning suicide squad and so far it's only the dceu that is capable of actually getting an oscar of their own because now marvel actually can with something like black panther and um it, it definitely is uh, an oscar or three oscars very well deserve on them and as for the rest, well, it really is a massive mix of mix a miscellaneous bunch. Uh, even though some of them were highly obvious than others, like I will say, this is one of the most predictable Oscars that we got this year. Like we got a whole bunch of stuff. Like of course, uh, the song "Shallow" from A Star Is Born would be the winner for best original song. Um, then there, you got like First Man winning for best visual effects because um, when it comes to the visual effects, the Oscars would lean more towards something that would be a little bit more realistic than something that would be crazy CGI heavy because First Man was definitely unique on that front compared to all its other competitors like Infinity War or Christopher Robin or Ready Player One or Solo A Star Wars Story. Um, now, those visuals on those films, they are definitely fantastic, but yeah, it is obvious that they would go with something like, uh, First Man. Uh, who, who else do we got, like, as different winners? Um, like, we got If Beale Street Could Talk, uh, the winner for Best Actress in a Supporting Wool is Regina King, just like at the, uh, Golden Globes. And also, another thing like the, uh, Golden Globes is actually Best Actress for Olivia Colman in The Favorite, and so far, that is the only one that The Favorite actually did get, uh, a big win on. Um, but then all the other stuff, I guess you got, like, uh, just the other categories, like, for, uh, uh, shorts and for documentaries, like, Free Solo for Documentary Feature, Period, and en Period End of Sentence for Documentary Short, and Skin for Live Action Short Film. So, I think that should pretty much go and cover, uh, most of the wins for the Oscars, if not all of them. Uh, so with that said, I think the only thing that we would have left, it would actually be talking about the show itself. Now, the thing with the show, about the whole Oscars of what happened, is that, um, it's kind of funny because, for me, when I came in, I expected that this is probably a disaster. Because you have probably heard about all the reports regarding how they were so disorganized when setting up this year's Oscars. They could not find a host, so they decided they're going to go hostless, even though people have been suggesting them stuff like the Muppets, and yet the Oscars decided not to listen. I don't know why, but still, a Muppets, uh, like a Muppet hosting Oscar show would be fantastic. I'm just laying it out there for the future. Uh, so you got that. Uh, you got no host. And on top of that, originally, they wanted to cut out some of the categories they wanted to cut out uh some of the well not necessarily get rid of them for good but only for the presentation that they would only be airing them during the commercials and that one actually got some major backlash because uh there were some of them like uh best cinematography and uh best makeup and hairstyling they would have been uh off the air and only be on during the commercials but it actually did get a massive backlash from some of the highly prominent stars uh and prominent filmmakers as well like uh, Guillermo del Toro uh Edgar Wright and a few others but that did not but the Oscars decided that they're going to back out on that so you could tell there was a bit of a disorganization there but what ended up happening though the end result with this year's Oscars I will say it wasn't as disastrous as I thought, but um, I, I, I would definitely say that there are some people that would probably feel like maybe it's not as engaging, it's not as exciting as some of the other Oscar performances. And for that, I don't necessarily blame them. Yeah, it does feel like a more dull 
and forgettable kind of thing because one thing that they did and I I am honestly kind of surprised that they did that is actually the fact that they were a little bit more straightforward with it. You know, they decided to cut out most of the filler that we would usually see with the hosts, but they decided, you know what, we're not doing that. We're just going to go straight into each of the categories and that's pretty much it. At the most that we have seen that is not a category is literally just um, that one time when they were talking about uh, the Academy Museum, which does look pretty impressive. And uh, I like, honestly, I would actually want to go back to Los Angeles to go and visit that museum. That actually looks amazing. And plus the fact that they even advertised that there's going to be some artwork from Hayao Miyazaki from some of his, uh, uh, fa some of his best films like uh, Totoro and Spirited Away and stuff like that. So that I would definitely want to keep an eye out on. Uh, so you got that and of course you got the songs as well uh, They got to go and perform like those musical numbers to make things engaging and make more of a spectacle out of the Oscars show Which they did actually leave out one of them oddly enough And uh, you know they did go and perform every single one of them like I'll fight the place where lots of things go shallow and when a cowboy trades his spurs for wings uh, they didn't perform all the stars from Black Panther, and that one I find to be a bit unusual. Now, I know that there are people who would go and they would tell me that, oh, well, that is because Kendrick Lamar, the singer of all the stars, uh, he didn't want to perform at the Oscars. Well, honestly, at that point, and yeah, like, they would say something like, oh, Kendrick Lamar, he couldn't make it. Okay, well, on that front, um, why not get someone else? Because with The Place Where Lost Things Go, it wasn't Emily Blunt who sung it. They ended up getting Bette Midler. So why not get a replacement that Kendrick Lamar would approve? I, I just feel like there is a bit of, the, uh, of uh, an inconsistency on, uh, inconsistency on that. And the, uh, and the Oscars decided that they would just be cool with it and just move on to some, you know, they, they decided, okay, it'll be less time for us. We can cut down the time, so we'll just get rid of that. I don't know. For that, I feel like it was a little bit unusual, and they could have just found someone else to sing all the stars so that they could have all the songs be prominent, but I do find it strange. But anyways, um, uh, going going into uh, back what I was talking about. So the only times that were a spectacle, yes, there was the uh, Academy Museum. You got the songs, and then also there was the opening as well, where um, it the the Academy would actually start things off, or the Oscar show would begin with a, a mini concert of Queen with Adam Lambert as the star of it all like he would be prominently on stage and he would be technically the replacement of freddie mercury and that one holy crap even though i am a huge fan of queen um well uh the instruments are great the guitars the bass the drums the, you know they're fantastic it is uh from the original uh band of queen but um it was very lackluster. It was just them singing, uh, we will rock you and we are the champions and that's it. And with Adam Lambert, there have been times like in previous concerts where he did put in the effort of sounding like Freddie Mercury. Uh, this one though, uh, not really. It just, you know, like honestly with the way that he performed, it was almost like you were going into karaoke quality there. So honestly... That wasn't all that great. So, yeah, like, honestly, the the opening was a bit of a lackluster, but I will admit they did pick things up a little bit when they had that mini montage of all the movies, not just the Oscar-nominated ones, but pretty much every single popular movie that came out throughout 2018. So they had, like, a little montage to celebrate all those feature films, so... Uh, there was that that did pick things up a little bit so uh, there the, you know they they did keep themselves a little bit minimal and they went a whole lot more straightforward and i can definitely see where they did like where this element it really did pay off because uh, the funny thing is that without a host you could tell that the time is a lot shorter than most recent Oscars. And case in point, uh, the whole Oscars show, is, like this year, it was only around 3 hours and 15 to 20 minutes. It was just like over 3 hours and that's it. 
like usually with the hosts, they could go for over four hours or even four and a half hours. Sometimes the length of those can be absolutely ridiculous. But without a host, uh, they did go into a pretty short time that I was honestly very surprised at the fact that they would get into it. I saw like on the scheduling that they wanted to go just at three hours. But the fact that they only go a little bit over that, I was honestly shocked about it. But I will say, um, even though there are, you know, even though like we don't have an Oscar, uh, or we don't have an, uh, we don't have a host from there, that would leave a lot more room for the presenters to come in and do their thing. And from there, that was honestly something that I was a bit worried about. I am glad that for the most part, some of them would just be more straightforward. They would stick to the script and sometimes they would throw in a little bit of a casual gag here and there. That's perfectly fine. But then there are those that you can tell that um, it is kind of obvious that they are trying a little bit too hard. That's where it was at the point where they want to try to make things up over the fact that they don't have a host and you know they you know they really want to try to be really funny. They really want to try to execute that hard and it kind of failed terribly on that. Sometimes like honestly that was the point when I really got worried because th th that's when you know that like you you're going into cringy territory and there are a few prominent stars that you know, they didn't get anything prepared, and you could tell that the Academy just told them, okay, just, you know, just try to be funny, try to do something, and there are those that did try a little bit too hard, and it, it, it did get into a little bit of that cringe. And case in point of that, probably one of the most memorable presenters, and probably not in the best way, I don't know what the fridge they were doing, but, um, there was this moment. There was this. You seeing this guy, this dress, for some, okay, now for those of you who are only, okay, so for those of you who are only listening, you probably don't know what I'm talking about and you're just only hearing applause, but the thing is, is that for best costume, uh, you got B uh, Brian Ty Tyree Henry and Melissa McCarthy coming out with some of the most ridiculous costumes, and especially with the case of Melissa McCarthy, I don't know what the frig she is wearing. She's like wearing this Renaissance Victorian era style poofy dress, like trying to challenge Queen Elizabeth I. But for some reason, like in her long cape and all around her dress, like there would be these bunny plushies. There would just be all these random bunny plushies just attached to it. And in one of her hands, she had a little bunny puppet. Why? I, it's, it's hard to explain. It is something that you have to go online. You got to look it up yourself. But you just look at this and you don't know what to say. Like, why? It, and I understand. Like, some people say, well, oh, that's just the gag. You know, this is just a gag. This is just to go and, uh, you, you know, to really make a joke out of best costume design. But it's just like, why, though? I don't... It's like... Why? It's like, you look at this and you're like, why? Like, that's all I can ask. It's, it's hard to explain. It's just, I really was at a loss of words. And I still am right now when I would see this. And that's all I can ask is just, why? Why all this? Why are you doing this? It's just, I feel like this is the most ridiculous thing. And it really shows how far sometimes the Oscars would go in order to deliver a joke. And this is... This is ridiculous right here. Like, oh boy. But I will say though, that I'm not saying that all Oscar presenters are cringy and stuff like that. As I stated before, there are some pretty good ones and there are some memorable ones. And uh, for me, I would say that if there is one great moment that I really did enjoy, probably my best, my favorite moment of this year's Oscars would have to be the part when they introduce the place where lost things go and even the song itself when it played. Um, it was a very sweet moment and for me, even though I, I do agree that Mary Poppins Returns is not um, 
you know, even though Mary Poppins Returns, it's not like one of the best Disney movies or not. It's definitely not one of the best movies of the year and it does have a lot of flaws. Um, I would say that it is one of my favorite movies of 2018 because it brought me so much joy, much more than plenty of other movies that I've seen not only this year but just in recent years so I really do have a bit of a fondness for Mary Poppins Returns and I absolutely adore that soundtrack so I am happy that at least it did get a nomination for one song in um in best original song I would have probably picked something else though other than the place where lost things go I probably would have gone with either underneath the lovely London sky or nowhere to go but up but, um, no, but still, like, at least that is there. But anyways, at the Oscars, they actually did something really cool where it was Keegan-Michael Key presenting it, and, um, he didn't just walk on stage, like, he actually flew down with an umbrella, Mary Poppins style, which was actually really cool and really a lot of fun to watch, and especially... You got that heartfelt moment with um, uh, with uh, Betty uh, Bette Midler singing The Places Where Lost Things Go. And it was definitely a sweet and tender moment that really did reflect the movie. And like probably the biggest highlight of Mary Poppins Returns at the Oscars. And that was my favorite part right over there because um, it was well executed. The presenter was great. The singer was great. <coughs> Everything. The set was great. Everything was uh, about it was great, so uh, that was something that I feel like was just fantastic. Uh, but then there was also another uh, highly memorable moment, and it was actually regarding Samuel Jackson because uh, Samuel, like, there was a little moment at the Oscars where they did like this really subtle plug-in of Captain Marvel, where it was Brie Larson and Samuel Jackson both coming in to present both Best Original Screenplay and Best Adapted Screenplay. And they started off with Original Screenplay, and there are some people who did note that Samuel Jackson was not all that pleased with the fact that Green Book actually won that award. But then, you got Best Adapted Screenplay. And that, like, I did try hard to look for that reaction online, and I did find it. Oh, you gotta see. You gotta see how Samuel Jackson reacted to that. And the Oscar goes to. Oh, the house! Charlie Wachtel, David Rabinowitz, and Gabriel Wilmot as Bird Me! <laughs> it's just that little reaction right there. Like, he was just so happy about it. it. It's just like so genuine and so out of nowhere the fact that he saw. That what he, probably the one that he was rooting for the most. Like, you know, let, let's just see that again. Hold on a sec. Oh, the house! <laughs> like, honestly, if there is one thing that's going to become a meme out of this year's Oscars, I'm betting it's going to be that little moment of Samuel Jackson freaking out when he opened up seeing Black Klansman. And it was really funny, too, because, like, when they both, when both Brie Larson and Samuel L. Jackson came out, Samuel L. Jackson was talking, you know, he was talking directly to Spike Lee that there was, there was this game going on and one of the teams that I think they were rooting for won. So honestly, it was really funny to see that. And I think this is actually legitimately the first time that Spike Lee finally got an Oscar. So it really was a big deal, uh, at the same time as, um, as like last year when it was Jordan Peele who won the Oscar for best writing or I think best original screenplay in uh, Get Out. So it was, it, it was definitely a big deal. So, sorry, I just need to see this again. <laughs> oh my god. It, it's just, you know, I'm not making fun of this. This is just so genuine. This is just so happy. Oh my god. Th th this is beautiful. This was definitely a great and beautiful moment at the Oscars. And um, also, there is another thing that I would like to actually discuss about, and that would actually be regarding the length of it, because I I've already gone into that a little bit before, the fact that it is actually surprising of the fact that we would actually see the Oscars just go a little over three hours when usually they would go like over four or even close to five in some cases. But um, in this one right over here, they decided to just go a little over three hours and it really did show. But honestly, another factor as to why it was so short is actually regarding the acceptance speech. Now, I know that 
for many cases, especially for some of the big ones like best directing, best picture, or like some of the best acting categories, they can let the actors go as long as they want to go and present their moment. And of course, like probably what many people say to be uh, the most memorable acceptance speech would have to be Olivia Coleman winning for best actress in The Favorite as she was like freaking out and being all ecstatic about it. It was definitely a cute moment. But um, the thing is, is that with the other ones, you could tell that all these people, they had some kind of memo to say, okay, don't waste our time, don't wrap things up, we're not going to stop for you or anything like that. And honestly, I saw that there actually was two instances where there were people who ended up being cut off. Uh, one of which, I, I forgot which one was it, but... It was one of the first uh, winners. It was one of the first categories that was revealed. And you got these people. They were so disorganized trying to open up the letters to give their thanks. And um, like trying to say the names and stuff like that. They ended up being too long. And like even the Academy was like, okay, that's it. That's it. Okay, move on, move on. But also another one that they actually ended up cutting short was actually with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, I don't necessarily blame the Academy because there were a lot of names that were attached to it. It wasn't just like with Lord and Miller, but also with the three other directors, with Bob Persetti, with Peter Ramsey, with, um, uh, who else was it? With Rodney Rothman. Uh, Rodney Rothman, sorry. <laughs> I, I almost said Robbie, Ro Robbie Rotten. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Imagine Robbie, Ro 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 Robbie Rotten being one of the directors of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Who did you expect? The Muffin Man? <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that was actually another one where you could tell that with the mood of Lord and Miller and with the directors even though they were happy to get it they were definitely not like how they were at the Annie Awards like you don't see Lord and Miller making their little speeches about taking risks always pay off and stuff like that like this one they were a lot more straightforward they were like all right thank you for the academy yeah um, also thank you for, thank you sony i'd like to thank all those guys too <laughs> you know like they were quick about it and like uh, like one by one they were trying to get into you know trying to give their acceptance speech but even the academy was like okay that's it nah we're done get out of here all right move on to the next thing it was honestly kind of funny that uh well like it was funny but also kind of um like, uh, like, I can understand if some people were a bit insulted by that little moment after Spider-Man 1, but, like, you could tell that they really did have a schedule, and there must be some kind of, uh, some kind of memo given to say that, okay, don't waste your time with the accepted speeches, like, just wrap things up or else we'll wrap it up for you. So, that actually did play a bit of a factor in terms of the length. And, uh, honestly, I did actually just, uh, figure that out. Like, I, I just discovered this just before starting, uh, this little podcast right over here. And I was actually curious regarding the rating. Because the thing is, if you guys have heard, the rating when it comes to the Oscars... Like, they would take forever to do... It's not... Well, it's not necessarily the fact that they would take forever. It's the fact that... It was one of the things that they were the most desperate to get right. They really wanted to make sure that the ratings can get some kind of boost one way or another because year after year, it's been going down and down and down and down and down. Like, it kept getting worse and worse. And uh, in the case right over here, at least in terms of the early reports, it does actually seem like... Things are getting better. It did actually get a little bit of a boost. The ratings are actually going a little bit higher. So it could be good news for the Academy. And things are actually starting to pay off for them. So maybe, you know, honestly, with the factor that the ratings are going up this year for this Oscars, I feel like that with this one, we could see a little bit more of something like this for future Oscars. I feel like in the future, considering that this one is working a lot better than most other Oscars in terms of ratings, we could probably see a little bit more in terms of hostless Oscars or short Oscars being just three hours long and really straight to the point, like trying to be so quick about it. I, I feel like honestly, this could be a game changer in terms of how the Oscars would present their shows. So uh, honestly, the factor that 
their ratings are getting a boost. It is great to hear that, you know, the popularity of the Oscars is starting to help out and the show is getting better, better ratings. So from there, I do feel like in order to encourage that, they are going to keep this formula going. There is something about this that we will see a little bit more than the rest. So maybe we will see a little bit more straightforward Oscars or hostless Oscars and stuff like that. It, it, it is honestly very interesting and I feel like we could see a little bit more of that. So overall, when it comes to the Oscars show, um, it is great that it is straightforward and I do understand if people might complain that it is a little bit... Uh, a, a lot more forgettable as an Oscars show more so than others, but um, I will give it that it didn't turn out to be a dis as much of a disaster uh, than I expected, and uh, like I'll probably forget this uh, by the time this week will be over, but uh, honestly, I do find that it is quite fascinating to look into, but uh, yeah, so this is pretty much this year's Oscars, and I know there have been a lot of stuff that people are going to be talking about and uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of pleasant surprises, a lot of disappointments and all that kind of stuff in between. So uh, with that said, considering we do have people in the chat wall, I would like to ask you guys, what do you think of this year's Oscars? Um, are there some awards that you are happy about? Are there some that you are disappointed about? Um, what do you think about the show? Let me know what you guys think about this year's Oscars. I would like to know in terms of uh, your thoughts. Okay, let's see now. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, I honestly didn't expect this to happen, but congrats to Sony. At least for the uh, uh, at least from this can give them some motivation to make better films in the future. But honestly, I rather have either Isle of Dogs or Incredibles two to win. I I did even complain once when saying why not. Lego Batman movie when you can't well you can't win them all uh I just wish I saw them through okay so um uh let's see for me the highlight of the Oscars was Black Panther getting three Oscars all right so um uh let's see what else do we got here uh let's see uh oh as a spider-man fan who grew up with the comics and movies i'm very satisfied i'm very happy to everyone including sony to win best pe uh, best animated feature at the oscars since winning best animated short from uh the chub chubs uh com uh congrats to everyone including phil lord chris miller and peter ramsey for the win and um uh, Okay, you kind of left out Bob Perchetti and Rodney Rod Rothman, but okay. Uh, by the way, do you like the soundtrack of the Spider Verse? Um, well, uh, yeah, it's all right. It's no, it's no Mary Pop, it's no Mary Poppins Returns. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the Oscars were were decent this year. Uh, just Best Picture was a massive disappointment. Congrats to all the winners. Can't wait for 2019. Well, technically we are 2019, but I think you mean Oscars 2020. So yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, from there, I think, uh, yeah, I think it should be good. So with all that said and done, I think the only thing I would just have to say is just, uh, congratulations to all the winners at this year's Oscars and also congratulations to all the nominees at this year's Oscars. And, uh, with all, oh, wait a minute, actually, um, oh, we actually got, oh, I'll add in one more, uh, just a quick addition. Well, I did not see the Oscars. I am very... Uh, I am very happy for Sony and Pixar for their deserved wins. And by hearing your thoughts, uh, it's good to hear the Oscars show is getting an improvement. All right. So, yeah, I think uh, with all that said, we are pretty much good with this episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. So just a quick reminder that I will be coming back on March 9th for a regularly scheduled episode. Uh, this honestly turned out to be a lot longer than I expected, but I guess uh, we all had a whole lot to say about the Oscars. So with all that said and none, I would just like to say thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time... See you later, dudes!